It always sucks when it's overcast and shitty out and the light from this window doesn't do enough and I have to have this light on and it's a weird... I feel like it looks weird. I don't know. I... So Ready Player One is a sci-fi action adventure film uh, based on a novel written by Ernest Cline. Uh, the movie's written by Ernest Cline along with Zach Penn and it's directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, just a couple months removed from his last movie, The Post, which was about the release of the Pentagon Papers. And I was excited when I first heard that this movie was being made and that Spielberg was signed onto it. And that was like two years ago, back when there were no cast or posters or anything. The reason I was excited is that I like the idea, or I liked the idea of Spielberg sort of going back to his roots of blockbuster filmmaking, uh, where there's a, a tad more substance than just, you know, your run-of-the-mill standard Hollywood studio fare. Um, and there hasn't really been a Spielberg film I've really loved since probably, like, Catch Me If You Can. It's not that most or really any of the films Spielberg has directed since 2002 have been bad or anything. Um, in fact, most of them are perfectly fine. Uh, but that's kind of all they are in most cases for me. But in Spielberg's, like, heyday, um, when he was making sort of a lot of blockbustery studio films, the sentimentality and the simplicity that has become, like, inextricable with Spielberg, um, served those movies well. Uh, and in most cases it was kind of, it was part of the whole campy escapist charm of the whole thing, like with... Raiders of the Lost Ark, and with um, Jaws, and with Jurassic Park, and even with like E.T., I would consider that a blockbuster. It was the highest grossing movie for a while. Anyway, I was excited at first to see Spielberg kind of make another attempt to get back into that, uh, but now having seen Ready Player One, uh, <laughs> and I was kind of anticipating this in the weeks leading up to my seeing it. Um, it's, it, it, eh. uh, it was a little disappointing and uh, kind of off-putting in a lot of ways. I'm getting ahead of myself, I should really talk about the movie though. So Ready Player One is set in 2045, and the world's gone to shit, and no one wants to actually fix any of the problems, so they just turn to this virtual reality video game to distract themselves, and a dude named Halliday, played by Mark Rylance, and his partner, played by Simon Pegg, they started a VR game place called The Oasis, which eventually became basically the entire global economy through in-game transactions. And the movie follows a young orphan boy named Wade, who's a super cool dude in The Oasis, and everybody's trying to get the Easter egg hidden in the game by Halliday, which involves getting three keys to unlock the gates of whatever and all the clues and things to find the easter egg have to do with Halliday's past being an introverted geek ass who was obsessed with 80s pop culture and I guess also st some stuff from right now like Overwatch and Minecraft and shit. And so in the movie everybody including the main character is combing through this library of his all of his memories of all the video games and movies that he ever interacted with uh, so that we can get all of the pop culture icons that Warner Brothers owns or could secure the rights to on screen together fighting in a big deafening CGI battle so we can all point at the screen and clap and piss our pants when our favorite big robot or dinosaur comes on the screen and then a cool guy from my favorite PS3 game says cool catchphrase and has the big gun that it, that he has and then they mention a meme thing and a TV show that I recognize I know what that is I've seen that before this movie is all things that I saw when I was a baby oh to be a boy again etc uh yeah you can probably see where this is going <laughs> But I'll start with things that I liked about the movie because there are a few that are worth mentioning. And I hate to have to make this point because 
everybody has made this point talking about this movie and every other Spielberg movie, and I hate it because even when Spielberg makes a mediocre-ass movie, there's got to be someone who has to write the think piece where we all blow him so we don't forget how cool he is, but it is true that Spielberg is kind of an expert in blocking action scenes and directing action scenes. He does it very well. He's good at directing and blocking just scenes in general, honestly. So in terms of, like, blockbuster filmmaking, in terms of action movie filmmaking, making action scenes that are fun to watch, I mean, the movie does that pretty well. I particularly really liked the car racing sequence toward the beginning. I thought it was fairly exciting. I thought the use of CG was pretty good. I also enjoyed a scene, I, I, I suppose this is spoilers, I... I'm not gonna say anything about what happens there or anything, but they have to go into the movie The Shining, like the actual grainy film footage from the movie. Uh, and that part was kind of neat in a, like a dramatic irony way, and also considering, you know, the connection Spielberg has to Kubrick. I don't know, I wasn't ever, like, bored, per se. Um, although I will say, I recently heard someone say that watching this movie, they were more occupied than invested, or occupied than engaged, I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, I think that's an apt description. Honestly, and maybe this is appropriate, but the movie feels like watching someone play a video game. I, I felt about as emotionally invested in the movie as I would watching two and a half hours of Let's Play videos, uh, and I... I don't like that quality in movies. <laughs> and by that I mean, after like 45 minutes to an hour, I'd pretty much had all the fun I was going to have, and I was I was basically waiting for the movie to end for the last like 30 to 40 minutes probably. There's like no sense of time or pacing with this movie, like I'm pretty sure months are supposed to have passed at one point, like between the beginning of the movie and when they get like the first key to the Easter egg. But it honestly could have been like a week, and I would have known the difference. Now, when the first trailers came out, I was really put off and unaccepting of the look of the CGI effects in the Oasis, which is a staggering amount of this movie. I thought that there'd be more than like 20 minutes of live-action footage in this two-and-a-half-hour movie, but it's really quite threadbare on that front. But yeah, I was really put off because they have the weird big eye avatars and it looks very uncanny valley, much like a modern game. But at some point I was like, that is kind of the point. They are in a modern video game. They would look like that probably. So like it makes sense in the movie's story and everything. But on the other hand, at the end of the day, it's another big blockbuster movie that has a lot of video game looking CGI shit doing mindless action movie things and making references to and cameos of things that the audience remembers from the past that are better. And there's like a million of those now. The movie, unfortunately, in my opinion, doesn't really do anything interesting with its characters or its subject matter to offset that fact, and that's kind of the core problem with the movie to me. The main character is incredibly bland, and he basically completes the closest thing to an arc or learning anything that he has, like, less than halfway through the movie. I thought all of his relationships with, like, the girl and with his friends from the game were very underwritten. When you learn where they all live and, like, who they all are, it just, they don't explore those things at all, and most of the characters' traits and actions are just conveniently there to move the story along and to get Wade to the end and to let him win. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff where there's like they're faced with an obstacle and then Wade goes like, that's okay, I did this to make sure we could do it. And that's never been talked about before. And it's like, oh cool. Good job. Nothing in the script builds on each other or really even connects or goes anywhere. It's just kind of ideas being thrown at you and images being thrown at you with no real association. There are several aspects of the plot that I felt were really underdeveloped, like the very well-equipped underground rebellion that shows up like partway through the movie that's not really explained or described at all before almost immediately 
serving its purpose and then never mattering again. They don't really go into any of the, like, dystopian world stuff surrounding the Oasis game. Maybe this is a nitpick, but in terms of the whole, like, easter egg hunt slash find the keys thing, I kind of don't buy... I'm not gonna give it away, I guess, but the thing that they have to do to get the first key is real simple, and I don't I don't think it would have taken five fucking months. It's, it's supposed to be, I think it's implied to be several months that it takes people to find the first key. And in the modern day, like now, that would not take that much time. There are, especially if we're to believe that this is like billions of people playing a video game in a world where playing video games is like the only thing anybody does anymore, there's definitely someone good enough that would have guessed this very, very simple fix to this thing. Uh, probably on the first day. Um, and, like, I'm also surprised that stuff like bots or hackers weren't a part of this world at all. Or, like, glitching or latency or the, like, difference in connection speed between classes, which is very briefly alluded to. Um, but given that the main character and his friends are, we are led to believe, fairly poor, and the antagonists are noted to be, like, rich corporate types, I feel like that could have been a bigger plot point. I think they could have gone into that a little bit more. The Oasis itself doesn't really feel like a, an explored, a properly explored or properly developed world to me. It didn't really have much character. I think it might be different in the book, but I believe that the Oasis is supposed to be like, that's the only thing anyone does. Like, that's the world now. I know they say that it's like the global economy, essentially, comes from video game transactions in the Oasis. And they say, like, if everything basically but eating and sleeping, people do in the Oasis. But they never really get into that and it just becomes a video game. Because the only thing in the Oasis that we follow is finding keys and playing mini-games like any other video game. And so it just becomes a video game. It just gets very convoluted, and like I said, none of it is terribly developed, and so it just becomes a bland, like, CGI mishmash of things. And I would be willing to be fine with that, uh if the movie did anything interesting with that concept. But I personally am very interested in seeing a movie, especially one like this with a big budget and a talented director, uh, that sort of explores the current day cultural moments surrounding video game culture and the commodification of geek culture or internet, digital culture, whatever you want to talk about it, whatever you want to call it. Um, along with, you know, our current cultural obsession with nostalgia and with escapism and the longing to be immersed in a world separate from consequence because the real world is depressing uh, and technologies that allow us to do that and how that's been affecting people and how it affects how society functions and how there are corporate entities that want to use those technologies uh, for their own gain at the expense of other people. I'd like to see a movie that uses this sort of, like, dystopian global virtual reality video game idea as the setting to explore these kinds of themes and these kinds of ideas. And I feel like Ready Player One had the opportunity to do that because it even, it flirts with having actual ideas at times. Like, it, it does, as I said, allude to those things sometimes but very vaguely and in passing, and it doesn't affect the characters much at all, and it doesn't really, you know, it's never really fleshed out or developed. And they try to, like, toward the end, they try to put a nice bow on it and try to make it like they learned that human interaction is a good thing, but it's very tacked on, and it feels kind of insincere, and all of it is within, like, this weird geek romance fantasy, and he, like, that's the culmination of that lesson and I just I don't find it appealing or interesting at all and the things it does say about like the notion of nostalgia and of being a true fan of pop culture 
and pretty much endorsing this obsession with pop culture and with wanting to remain in virtual contact with people and being, you know, that kind of socially isolated. Um, it's a mentality that I think, based on several jokes and scenes, the movie seems to get or admit it's unhealthy or ill-advised or not great, at least. There's no commenting on the pop culture. There's nothing to say about why the characters engage with pop culture in the way they do. It's just another movie that exists as a vehicle to have pop culture references and to have cameos and crossovers of other pop culture things that I recognize from the present day and from the past because nostalgia and, you know, retro 80s and 90s stuff has become commodified and, you know, idolized. But every fucking movie already does that, and I don't need any more of it, and it's not interesting. And this is the one kind of story where you could make it interesting, you know, because you actually, you're telling a dystopian sci-fi story about this phenomenon that's going on right now. And Spielberg seems to be aware that that is what he is ev trying to evoke in this movie, but then just completely failing to say anything about. And, like, maybe I shouldn't be surprised, but I was, I was thinking and hoping that this movie could pull off having more to say about the pop culture iconography in it and how people interact with it, rather than just being another movie where the main thing that people like about it is that various things from the past or from other things that they like, they got to see them again. Perfect example, T.J. Miller's character is going on a dumb monologue, and he mentions the center of a Tootsie Pop, and the line itself is fine. It's not really that funny, but it's fine. But then he literally just says, remember that commercial with the owl? And it's just dumb to me, because there's no point to it. There's no joke. He mentions a famous commercial. It's just the reference. There's nothing to be said of it other than, oh, look, it's that. Remember that? Pretty much everything in the whole movie just comes down to that. That's why I like the Shining scene, is because it's the one fucking time in the movie that the pop culture thing is actually given some sort of new perspective or used in a creative way. But most of the rest of it is just, oh, Iron Giant? You mean from the film Iron Giant? Well, he's here. And, like, that's just a very dumb and shallow and boring thing to get excited about in a movie to me. It's just... Or to, like, want to write a whole fucking story about. And I think the, the thing that pushes me from just being disinterested to annoyed with this movie is that when this movie premiered at South by Southwest, Spielberg himself said that Ready Player One is a movie and not a film, and that you shouldn't take it seriously, and it's just supposed to be popcorn entertainment. And it, it's fine, like, I'm not saying movies can't be that way, but I just think that him making a point to say that about this movie when at the same time I've seen featurettes where he th said that he thought the novel was, like, you know, evoking, like, that's that's what's gonna happen in the future. Having some sort of, like, commentary element to the film to come out before it actually comes out and anyone actually sees it and to be like, it's just some throwaway bullshit, it's fine. I just, I think that just sounds like a way to try to avoid criticism, and it also makes it clear to me that you as the director have no real emotional investment in your movie, and so, like, why should I care? I don't just get excited by seeing the Iron Giant in a movie. That's not why I like him. Or seeing things that remind me of video games I like. Those things aren't- they don't excite me enough to sit through two and a half hours of it and care about anything. Look, Steven Spielberg is a perfectly competent and talented director, and this movie isn't, like, painful to sit through. While it is generally more competently put together than most other standard blockbuster fare, in terms of just making comprehensible action sequences for the most part, 
uh, up until like the end, then it gets really clusterfucky. It really doesn't do much of anything to set itself apart in terms of actual content from any other big bloated CGI blockbuster. Neither Spielberg's style of action directing, nor the minor dopamine hit of seeing something cool that I recognize in a movie were enough to keep me interested. So, um, I'm feeling a, a 5 out of 10 for Ready Player One, and I don't feel good doing that. I really wanted to like this movie, actually, but I, I definitely feel like it's one of Spielberg's weaker ones. Yeah, I didn't really like this movie. That's it. Bye.